Hello. In this video, we are going to talk about another application of analog multipliers, and that is as RF mixers uh, for radio frequency mixers, also referred to as IF mixers, IF standing for intermediate frequency. And a mixer is essentially a, a frequency shifter. The purpose of an RF mixer is to take a, a, a modulated uh, radio frequency signal and shift it down to an intermediate frequency. If you remember from our discussion on uh, AM modulation and demodulation, we had originally a signal in the audible range, which is uh, typically at a, at a low frequency, frequency lower than 20 kilohertz. And in order for, uh, in order to make the signal suitable for transmission over a long distance, we modulated the signal using a high frequency carrier so that we will transmit the signal and then on the receiver end we will demodulate that high frequency signal in order to extract the information uh, signal, the low frequency information signal. Now in a certain uh, category of audio receivers there is an intermediate step uh, before that demodulation happens and that is to bring uh, the RF signal down to an intermediate frequency before it is demodulated. Now, you may wonder why the extra step of bringing it to an intermediate frequency and then bring it down to the low frequency as opposed to just doing it all in one step. And the reason is, um, in radio communications, uh, there is a, a range of frequencies, a spectrum of frequencies, uh, that are used for communication. And what is done is what's known as frequency multiplexing. In order for, uh, for different people to be able to use the same channel or different stations to be able to use the same uh, channel, what we do is we divide that channel into different frequency ranges and then we assign the different ranges to particular stations. And then on the receiver end, um, the user needs to adjust the frequency of the receiver to a particular uh, channel. So basically, it will be tuning in to a particular channel to extract the information out of that channel. Now, um, because the AM uh, frequency range is very broad, it is difficult to design uh, a high Q, high gain uh, tuned filter or tuned amplifier uh, that will be accurate and will have a high Q for the entire range of the AM frequency spectrum. It is much easier to design uh, our tuned amplifier or high Q tuned amplifier for a particular frequency, which we refer to as the intermediate frequency. And then what we do is whenever we receive an AM signal, we first shift it down to that intermediate frequency and then we apply uh, that signal to the input of our high tuned, um, high gain, high Q, high gain tuned amplifier. And again, it's just for ease of design. That's why the intermediate step. And so I've written here, um, audio receivers usually have narrowband tuned high gain IF amplifiers, and it is easier to design the IF amplifier for a given uh, frequency, the IF frequency, and shift any incoming signals to that frequency than it is to design a tuned amplifier with center frequencies adjustable over the entire AM range. And so uh, this frequency shifting process is also referred to as heterodyning. And uh, the receivers that use this, um, this process of first shifting the signal to an intermediate frequency and then demodulating the signal are therefore referred to as heterodyne receivers. So I have um, put together a block diagram of how the multiplier comes into, into play in such a system. Uh, we have, from our RF transmission, we have our RF signal, which if you recall, for standard AM transmission, our modulated signal contained three frequency components, one at the frequency of the carrier and then the two sidebands, uh, which were the carrier frequency plus minus the modulating frequency, uh, the frequency of the information signal. And so that's what I've written here. I have my modulated signal of frequencies or with frequency components at FC, which is the carrier frequency, plus the sum and difference of uh, carrier and modulating signal, uh, FC plus FM, FC minus FM. Those are the, the three components. And now the idea is that I 
I mix that or I apply that to the uh, input of an analog multiplier and then to the other input, I apply a periodic signal uh, coming from a local oscillator uh, at a particular frequency, what's referred to as the LO frequency, just because it is LO standing for local oscillator. And uh, uh, there are different ways of doing it, but normally it is the sum of the carrier frequency plus uh, the intermediate frequency that I'm going to be using. Uh, those two are fed into the inputs of an analog multiplier. And if you recall, at the output of an analog multiplier, I'm going to get components, uh, frequency components in my signal at the sum and difference of the frequencies of the two inputs of my analog multiplier. And so what I expect to get uh, will be uh, uh, frequencies that are the sum of my local oscillator frequency plus my modulated signal frequencies. Those will be the, you know, the sum uh, frequencies, which again is going to be FC plus FIF. And then plus the frequencies of my modulating signal, FC plus FM, FC and FC minus FM. And then I'm going to get uh, another set of uh, frequency components landing at frequencies uh, equal to the difference of the frequencies of the two inputs of my analog multiplier. So it's going to be the frequency of my local oscillator, FC plus FIF, uh, minus FC plus FM, FC, and FC minus FM. So again, what I'm doing is uh, simply I'm going to calculate at which frequency components um, do I get, or what frequency components do I get at the output of my analog multiplier. And as we had previously seen when we talk about modulation, when you put uh, at the inputs of the analog multiplier, when you apply two signals of two different frequencies, uh, the frequency components that you get are the output are going to be equal to uh, the sum and the difference of the frequencies of the two input signals. And so as far as the sum goes, um, I will have frequency components at uh, 2FC plus FIF plus FM. I'm going to line up my equal signs here, uh, 2 FC plus FIF and 2 FC plus FIF minus FM. So notice that what I have is essentially on this side, my frequency components are going to be centered around uh, twice the carrier frequency plus the intermediate frequency. And so I will get a component there. And then uh, that plus the modulating frequency and minus the modulating frequency, which is typically a low frequency. So this is going to be this uh, plus FM and that minus FM. And then um, I'm going to get another set of uh, frequency components that are uh, basically at the difference frequency between the local oscillator and the modulated signal. So this is going to be uh, FC minus FC cancel, so FIF minus FM, um, FIF and FIF plus FM. And so what I will get here is uh, similar as what I had above, except in this case it's going to be centered around FIF. And uh, this will be FIF plus the modulating frequency and FIF minus the modulating frequency. And so notice that uh, what I really want out of this system uh, is this second uh, part, the difference portion of my signal, this is the one that I am interested in because 
what I'm trying to do is shift my signal down to the intermediate frequency FIF. Now I do have uh, this other component, but notice that it is sitting at a much higher frequency, twice the carrier frequency uh, plus FIF. And so I can use my bandpass filter to filter out uh, the, the components of the sum, if you will, and just leave out the components from uh, the difference frequency. Uh, so that's the intention of the circuit. Now, um, because my low frequency, as you can see, is higher than my original uh, radio frequency signal, uh, we typically refer to this as high side injection. So it's like we're injecting um, a, a frequency uh, on the high side, a signal with a higher frequency. And so uh, this is typically referred to as a high side down converter. Down converter because you're shifting the frequency down to the intermediate frequency, which for AM signals is typically 455 kilohertz. Now we're going to take a look at um, a sample of a complete heterodyne receiver system to put these concepts a little bit more in context.